Good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. As you all are getting on, please sow that seed of sharing. Please sow that seed of sharing. I am only on YouTube. I was going to go on Instagram and Facebook as well, but the Lord said no. The Lord said only YouTube um, because this has to reach as many people as possible so that we are prepared and we are in line with what God is doing, going to do, and that we are staying in position and we're covered properly. So if you would, please sow that seed of sharing and let's get all of our family on right now as I too sow my seed of sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely, let's sow that seed of sharing. Let's get as many on as possible. As many on as possible. <clears throat> God is doing something in the earth with the body of Christ. God is doing something with his people. And we wanna make sure that we are prepared and we're ready. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you all and to you all a great good morning. 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 How's everybody doing? For everybody's blessed and highly favored. Blessings, blessings to you. Blessings to you. Peace and blessings to you. Greetings, greetings. Blessings. God bless. God bless. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I see something new on YouTube. We've got hearts. Okay. We can do hearts on YouTube now. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. We can do hearts. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Listen, I'm going to release the word of the Lord and I'm going to get off of here. Um, I'm not going to uh, be extra. We're not adding on. We're not doing all of that today. We're just going to release the word of the Lord and we're going to make sure that what God wants to say, those that have an ear, let them hear what thus saith the Lord. I am praying that we all are positioned mentally through the spirit mind not through our carnal mind, our fleshly mind, but we are positioned mentally through the spirit to really, really comprehend what God is saying, discern what God is saying. And we are also prepared to go forth in what God is saying. This is definitely a, <clears throat> a word that God has been preparing me for, for about two weeks. Um, I was telling my husband, I told my husband about a couple of weeks ago, I said, I got a prophecy to release to the people God is preparing me for. I got to release this word. Um, and this word is not new um, for this is the word of the Lord and everything that we speak as prophets of God, we speak the word of the Lord. What is in the word is what we will speak. Yes, God will give it to us in our layman's terminology, our terms, our language for the, I guess you want to say the area that we're in, the arena that we're in, the age that we're in, in this time we're so modernized now. And so, you know, up to beat with everything that God will give you a word, even though it's his word returned, it's still a word in the way that we, as the people of God in our time will be able to understand it. So I truly believe that um, the Lord is preparing his people as he always prepare his people. We can never say God does not prepare his people. God always prepares his people. It's now up to the people to be prepared. God never allows anything. So let me say that again. God never allows anything because God is not a God of harm. God is not a God of harm. Let me say that. 
God is not a God of harm. God's plans for us, Jeremiah 29 and 11, is the plans that are to prosper us, not to harm us. Plans of hope and a future, plan of good health, plan that will get us to the expected end that he expected for us. We just have to be in expectation to hear and to go forth in it. So God's plans are never to harm us, but God does allow different things to take place in our lives and throughout our life that it then can get our attention and it can get us repositioned if we're out of position. So this is not a word to scare the body of Christ or to scare anyone who hears this word, but this is a word for us to get in position and get prepared. This is a word that will correct us. This is a word that will help us be in alignment with what God is going to allow, because this is not what God is doing. God is not doing harm. God is not sending viruses. God is not killing people. That's not what God does. God don't do that. God is a God of life. God gives life. God is a God that he brings forth life. He produces. He does not take away. God allows different things to come into our life that those things can be taken away, that those things can be removed if he needs to add or replace. That's what God does. We've learned that in the book of Job, how God did not bring harm on Job, but he allowed different things to take place in Job's life so that what he wanted to do with Job, it could take place. So again, what I'm getting ready to release to you is not God's doing. It is a word of prophecy of what's to come and how we as the people of God are to position ourselves that we're not caught in what God is allowing. Even though it's the wrath of God, it is not God's doing that God is doing this. It's what he's allowing because there are people that will not grasp it. There are people that will not get right. There are people that will not do right. And so God has to allow the enemy to do certain things within the earth that he can then reset, that he can, he can then do what needs to be done. This has been done throughout the Old Testament several times with the children of Israel how the Lord had to reprimand, how God had to bring uh, uh, them into the knowledge of who he was and for them to honor him in the way that they should honor him because they were chosen. And because we are a chosen nation, we are a chosen people, God will allow different things to happen with us that we can then run back to the Savior. The Lord is saying now, as he has told John in Revelation, when he allowed John to enter in to the heavenly rims. He told John to tell the Ephesus church, to tell the people to get back to their first love, get back to loving me in the manner that you loved me when you first connected with me, when you first uh, uh, gave your life to me, get back to that love, love me how you loved me before. And we're living in a time now where people don't love God like they're supposed to. Their mouth speaks that they love God, but their hearts are far from loving God. And God is sending a sound through the real prophets. This word that I am going to give you today, uh, I released it um, in the COVID-19 prophecy as well when the Lord gave it to me in 2019 of March. He gave me the prophetic word for COVID-19 and COVID was coming, that a virus was coming. In that prophecy, you can go back and, and uh, re-listen to it. It is on my YouTube channel as well. In that prophecy, there were things that was released. I released that a famine was coming. I, I, I released through the spirit of the Lord that there was going to be different things that would happen with the finances, the banks. We've been seeing all of this stuff come to pass now. We've been seeing the Lord spoke in that same prophecy prophecy about the foods, about the meats, how we're going to have to be careful and aware of the meats and the different things that's going to take place with our food chain, our food system. We're seeing those things happening now. And so God is just reiterating in this time what he already said, but he's going to give it to you in a different manner because of the things that have derived, the things, the new things that are surfacing, the new things that is taking place. And so one thing about God, before he allows the enemy access to do what he wants to do, 
because it is God that gives the enemy permission to do what it is that the enemy does. The Bible says that God gave Satan the permission to touch Job in certain areas. Catch this in the spirit. The Lord gave uh, Satan access to touch Job in certain areas, but he put a restriction on Satan. And when we are in God and we are living in the presence of God and we are doing what we're supposed to do, there are restrictions that God gives the enemy concerning you. There are ways the enemy cannot touch you. You are protected by God when you are in God. You are covered by God when you are in God. So it is imperative that you get connected to God like you've never been connected to God before for the things that are to come for the things that are to happen for the things that will take place and one thing about God he's warning you now so nobody can say where were the prophets because we had that take place when COVID-19 came when people said where were the prophets that were that was supposed to be speaking the prophets spoke but did you have an ear to hear the prophets were speaking those that were real those that were righteous those that were hearing from God they did speak. Where were you when the word was going forth? Were you caught up into your own personal agendas? Were you caught up into your own personal motives, your own personal uh, uh, visions and your own personal things that you want to do? Were you so caught up into being stuck into your old ways that you could not even hear what God was doing in the earth? We have to be careful who and what we're connected to, that we're not disconnected from God, that we miss the word for God. So I am so, so, so excited today that many of you, I see there's 954 of you now that are live, that you have joined to get this word because this is a word that's going to help you get to where you need to be in God. And so we're going to go into prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you this morning for, for you, God, allowing me to be the vessel to speak, God, what is coming. Father, I do not take it lightly. I do not take it for granted. God, I am literally fearful right now. God, of if I was to say something wrong, you would take me out. If I was to make a wrong move, you would take me out. If I was to say what I wanted to say, you would take me out. So God, I will not play with this word. God, I will speak what you tell me to speak. I'm going to say what you tell me to say. God, I use my mouth as your instrument. God, to release this word to your people, the people that you've chosen, the people that you love so dearly, that they would get in alignment with you, that they would get back that connected to you if they're not connected, that they will get in the will of you if they're not in your will. God, that they, God, will decrease, that you may increase in them even the more, that they will be filled with your Holy Spirit if they're not filled. God, I decrease that you may increase in me. God, and I allow your words to flow out of my belly like rivers of living water out of my mouth. God, I want you to allow me to enter in to the heavenly realms that I can see and I can decipher and I can discern and I can speak what it is that you are showing me. God, my ears are here. My eyes are here. My mouth is here and they're all yours. Have thine own way this morning, God. God, I declare that this word will go forth smoothly. God, I dismantle and I cancel and I rebuke any backlash, any retaliation from this word. I, God, I, God, speak now that any and every demonic force, spirit, witchery that tries to rise up against me is canceled and it is sent back to the pits of hell from whence it came. Any word that tries to rise up against me, it shall be condemned. I speak it now and I declare it now for I am your vessel and I go forth in your son, Jesus, the Christ name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I will be looking over um, a lot at my phone as I have written word for word <clears throat> verbatim what the Lord has given me to release to the people. Um, I truly believe that there are other prophets out there that are speaking the word. I truly believe that God is using other people to release what is getting ready to take place and what is getting ready to happen about two weeks ago, um, I was coming out of a dream. And as I was coming out of a dream, it was almost as if I was coming out of a dream into a vision. And what I saw was, uh, and, and it, it was confirmed on Sunday, um, Apostle, my husband, said something on Sunday and God reminded me 
of what he showed me. And then afterwards, when the Lord used me to re-release the word to the people in Sunday services, it was confirmed from my sister. She told me what she dreamt and it was literally almost identical to what God was allowing me to dream and then visually see as I was coming out of the dream. And so about two weeks ago, um, I had a dream that um, I was I was walking in like this store. I was walking in the store and in the store, um, I was headed towards the aisle for like uh, personal items. It was like deodorants and 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 like toothpaste and stuff like that. I was going down that particular aisle and I didn't get anything. I didn't grab anything on the aisle. But as I was on the aisle, uh, there was a lady screaming and she was saying, I need it. I need it. I need it. I need it. It's what's going to cure me. I need it. I need it. I need it. It's what's going to cure me. And I didn't know what she was talking about. Um, in the dream. I, I didn't know. I just didn't know what she was saying. And so um, what, what she was trying to get or what it was that she she basically stated she needed. Um, and so as I was looking at her um, from the side, I really couldn't see what it what was going on with her. But when she turned around and she was facing me, it was like her her mouth and her skin from her mouth, it, everything was just coming. It was like it was falling off. It was like the skin was was deteriorating or something. It, it was like it was like the, the 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 stuff out of her mouth was coming out, and her skin from her lips and everything was just like coming apart, like they were disintegrating and and falling, and and it was like peeling. It was it was it, it was really bad. It, it was blistery. And and I, I said, oh my God. And I was waking up. And as I could feel myself waking up, the vision that I had was me taking like oil. It was like some type of oil or something. And I was rubbing my mouth and I was rubbing my hands and I was rubbing my body down. And the words that I was saying, I was saying, Lord, don't allow this virus to hit me. Don't allow this virus to hit me. And I woke up. And when I woke up, I said, I said, oh my God, I said, God, what are you saying? Like, like what, what is it that you're releasing um, to me to give to your people? And God said that there's another virus coming. Um, it is actually in the works now. It is it is literally being created as we speak. Um, this virus is not a cold like symptom virus. It's not a virus where it's going to be respiratory or it's going to be like sinuses or anything like that. This virus literally deals with bacteria that will cause, you know, almost as like a skin uh, infection, uh, a skin eating flesh uh, bacteria. It, it's going to be like a, like it's going to eat at your skin. It's almost as if like, like how maggots, maggots eat and they eat the, the stuff and they, they're eating away. It's, it's going to be a flesh like eating disease virus. And it's going to really be a bacteria that, that will pass through like mouths and, and the touch of hands and touching stuff. Um, what, one of the things that, that my, it, and literally what my sister said on, um, Sunday, she said, it's almost like the ear, mouth, and throat like type virus that 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 thing that people get um your feet and, and and in your hands it's going to be a very bad virus this virus is literally going to eat at the flesh and it's going to be a rapid eating away at the flesh it's it's not going to be like a like like it's 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 when if if it's if it's caught or if it's on you and, and you get it, it's going to eat away. And it's not going to be like a, a like a elongating extended period of time. It's going to eat away. And they're not going to have a cure for it. 
immediately. So people are going to really die from this flesh eating virus. It's going to be a flesh eating virus and it's going to be very bad. It's going to be very bad. One of the things that God said was that we are going to have to keep our hygienes up. We did this before with COVID. Everybody was so on the whole, we got to wash our hands. We got to wash our hands. We got to put on gloves. We got to wear masks. We've got to do all of this. We got to do all of that. This one around, you're going to have to keep up your hygiene. You're going to be have to have to be careful what you touch it, how you touch it. Put your hand in your mouth and, and touch your children and different you your hygiene. God says, make sure that we're keeping up our hygiene, that we're keeping up our hygiene. There are going to be certain products. Let me tell you something. You're going to be happy. You're going to have to be careful because this bacteria will be passed through foods. This bacteria will be passed through foods. If you are a foodie like me, I'm a foodie. I love to eat. I like food. You're going to have to follow the spirit of God. A lot of the stuff you eat, you can't. Meats. Oh, we know meats are a hard thing. Y'all, you're going to have to cut the meats. Bacteria grows even the more like it grows like in meat quicker and it grows in meat because meat is can already be a contamination. Meat can already carry salmonella when it's not cooked properly, when it's not. And meat can easily be injected with stuff. You can easily inject things into meat. You have to be careful. You cannot get stuck on meat. Be careful, follow the spirit of God and know what to eat because these bacterias will be put in food. These bacterias will carry over in foods. So you have to be careful what you eat. You have to keep up your hygiene. First and foremost, let me tell you, this virus is not coming tomorrow. It's not coming next year, but it is coming soon in the years to come. Around about, I want to say 2025, the Lord says this virus will make its appearance. There is already some viruses. This virus is already making its way into other countries, into other places. It's already starting to come out. But just like COVID, COVID was already active in other places. COVID was already active in other countries, but it did not become prevalent in our country, in the United States. Some of you on here may be all over, all over the world. I don't know where you're tuning in from, but in the United States, it became a main factor in 2020 of March is when it really, really, really was put out that coronavirus, COVID-19 was here. We know people were sick from COVID way before they even knew that COVID was active and was a, a thing. But this virus that is coming, this flesh eating virus that is coming, it is already becoming known in other places. It's just not being announced because they're still creating and they're trying to make it worse than what it already is. It hasn't reached the effect that they want it to reach yet. So that why it's not going to be something that we're going to see tomorrow. It's not going to be something that we're going to see next year, but around about 2024 into 2024, 2025, you're going to uh, basically about seeing this virus, this virus become more operative, more active, more known, more talked about. Be careful of where you go and who you go with and what is going on. One of the things that the Lord said, to me concerning this virus. God said in 2020, when Corona, when COVID came, he said, I protected my people. My people that had an ear to hear, we do not like the fact that many have lost loved ones and some are still regrouping. Some are still recovering. There are people that had COVID that escaped it and got out of it and they still have their life. Their life was spared, but they still have symptoms as far as back pains and different things that they're still trying to recover and regroup. And we don't like the fact that these things happen. But when we don't do what God says and we don't line up with God's word, this is a 
word for real. You cannot blame God. You have to blame yourself because God gives us an opportunity to get it right. God gives us an opportunity to, to, to strip off those things. The Bible says, lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us, that so easily get us caught up in to allowing ourselves for these things to come on us. And God specifically spoke in 2019 when he gave me the word to release those that are connected to God and those that are connected to the right people, those that are connected to what is really of God will not be touched, will not get COVID, will not get sick. And if they do, they won't die. They will come out. And we have testimonies of what God has done through that. This virus, the Lord literally said in this time, it is going to hit the body of Christ who considered themselves. Let me say this. Okay, God. He says, those that call themselves the body of Christ because it won't hit the body of Christ. Let me make that clear to everybody. It will not hit the body of Christ because Christ can't get sick. Christ is the healer. Christ is the spirit. And there is nothing that can come and dwell in the spirit where, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So the Christ being Christos, being the spirit of God, there is nothing, no sickness, no anything that can come up against Christ. So if you are the real body of Christ and not professing the body of Christ, but you're really the body of Christ, it will not come nigh your dwelling. It will not touch you. But God says those that have been proclaiming the body of Christ, they are the body of Christ and they're really not is hitting hard. He says, because he's tired and he will not be mocked. He will not be mocked. He says the example will be shown through those that call themselves the body of Christ. So I'm saying this with boldness because I hear the Lord. You better be careful. The churches meaning the temples, because we are the church, we know that, but the temples, the sanctuaries, the congregations, the pastors you sit under, because if you're not, and I don't care, because many people run to the names, I want to be at the church with the biggest name. I want to be connected to the biggest name. I want to sit at the biggest name church because I feel like my gift can work there. I feel like I can get a name there. I feel like I can go higher there. Let me tell you something. You want to be in the right church at the right time. You want to be connected to the people that's doing God for real. You do not want to be connected to houses that ain't got no power, that don't have no anointing, that don't have no glory, that don't have no God because you will be in danger. You will be in danger. So you want to get in a house of God that has God. Because those houses that house God are the houses that he's protected, that he's considered to be the body of Christ. The body of Christ. God says, and a lot of these falsified ministries are going to be the ones that will be hit if they do not get it together. You don't want to be caught in the fire. You don't want to be caught in the wrath of God. So you want to kill your flesh. And you want to kill your desire. And you want to kill your motives and you want to get in a place where you can be covered properly where you can be covered effectively if your leader is not sensing something in the spirit that there are things coming and they're not addressing and they're not saying and they're not warning you want to pray and you want to ask God, am I in the right place? Because good, great leaders that are in God are watchmen over God's people. And they are sending out the sounds. They are sending out the warnings. They are making it known that there is something coming. 
You've got to be prepared. You've got to be connected. You've got to stay in the will of God. There is a lot of distractions that the government is putting out right now. There's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things that's happening. The government is paying people. Oh, Lord, I pray this don't get flagged. It's already covered by the blood of Jesus. The government is going to pay certain people to cause calamity, catastrophes. There's going to be a lot of catastrophic things that begin to happen that is really irrelevant so that they can really do what they are doing behind the scenes. Pay attention. Do not get caught up in the distractions. Y'all better kill right now the spirit of racism and prejudice. You better get it out of your spirit, this whole black thing and this whole melanin thing and this whole racist thing. Get it out of your spirit now because it's going to be a tactic, a, a plot and a scheme and a distraction that the government likes to use when they're creating and they're doing stuff. It is time to get on the wall like never before. It is time to pray like never before. If you've never had a desire to be an intercessor, you better step it up and be an intercessor now. Because it is time to cover your families. It is time to cover your children. It is time to cover your ministries. It is time to cover your purpose. You want to be here to continue to be purposeful and effective in God. You don't want to die prematurely because you were not in the right place and you were not connected properly and you were not doing what you were supposed to do. If you get connected to God, John 15, one of the verses God said to me in your connections, if you are connected to the true vine, which is Christ. This is why you have to know the ministries that you are up under and who's covering you. Know the spirit by knowing the spirit, by trying the spirit, by the spirit. You've got to be under leaders that have the authority to ward off, pray off, dismantle, speak, and know what is going on. And have the ability to walk in authority and dominion to cover their ministries. This is not the time to chase names. This is not the time to chase fame. This is not the time to do your own thing. This is the time to do God and all of God. There is no other way. There is nothing else. There is nothing that you could try to do outside of God. Because if you try to do anything outside of God, it won't work. John 15 says that if you are not connected to God, which is through the true vine, Jesus, guess what? Because he is the way to the father, you will not be able to produce anything. You are null and void. You are nothing. And there's there, then there's no reason for you anyway. God says, get connected to Christ. Because when you're connected to Christ, you're going to be connected to people who's connected to Christ. You're going to be connected to ministries that's connected to Christ. The spirit of the Lord will lead you the places that you need to go. The spirit of the Lord is going to lead you. Whether you need to go to that store today, whether you need to go to this place today. This is not cliche. The spirit of God is powerful and knows all things and will protect you if you want to be protected. So the spirit of the Lord says, be careful of the ministries you sit under. He says, make sure that you are sitting under leadership that is bringing forth life because you will know the leaders by their fruit. The Lord says, be careful of who you sit under. You've got to make sure that the fruit lines up with the life of the word of God. You will know them by their fruit. What is their fruit? What are they producing? 
God said, this is big because it's about your connections. Don't you know you could be connected to the wrong person and they can actually carry this virus and that virus be kept pa passed on to you? What is that called? Cross-contamination. Cross-contamination. So you want to make sure that you're not in the crossfire. That what is being put out there is not attached and connected to you. And so God says around about 2025, we will begin to see the noticing of this virus. 2025, the noticing of this virus, because it's being created. It's being created even more in depth because it's already been created. It's just something to that they're making sure that it really has the effect that they want it to have. One of the things the Lord says that we have to pay attention to, the reason why AI is being created. The reason why AI is being created, artificial intelligence is being created is because of what they're sending and what they're getting ready to put out. There's going to be a lot of people losing jobs. There's going to be a lot of people. They're not going to have jobs. They're going to lose their jobs. They're doing this purposely. They're wanting to wipe out, if they possibly can, a lot of humankind. They're playing God. This is what's happening. They're playing God. And so AI is the replacement for humankind. They feel they can make this smarter than humankind. And so they want you to tap into AI so that you now can be connected and be brainwashed. Because there's going to be a great falling away of people. A lot of people, when this virus hit, is going to pass on. It's going to die out. Not only that, the Lord says in 2027, I gave this prophecy through the spirit of the Lord when COVID-19 was active. A famine is coming around 2027. 2028 will be when you will really see the effects of famine. The Lord told me in 2020, and I released this word, and the Lord told me to reiterate it today. We are in the seven years of Joseph. We are in the seven years of Joseph of prosperity. In 2020, the Lord told me to release this word. He says, daughter, I'm going to use you as the Joseph in the land. And this word you release to the people. And the word was, that from 2021 to 2027, we will have seven years of prosperity. Around about 2028, famine is going to be so effective in the land that we will not see a lot of resources. The resources are dying out. The resources are dying out. You're going to see a lot of companies closing. And it's not that they don't have the finances. It's not that they don't have the money, they 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 got to go out of business or they can't do anything or they no longer can profit or or take care of it. Mm -mm. They've been being paid off to close off these businesses, to close off these resources. We have been seeing how farms are killing off their cattle, their produce, they're killing off, they're throwing it out. They're being paid to do this type of stuff to create a famine. And so this famine is going to hit around about the latter part of 2027 going into 2028. And there will be years of this famine. Years of this famine. This is why the Lord told us in 2020 to stock up. This is why he told us in 2020 to make sure that we had all of the things we needed. There were a lot of people that fell off. There were a lot of people that stopped stocking up. There were a lot of people that 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 got used to us getting back into the motions and getting back into what we were in. No, famine is coming. The virus and famine is coming. Literally, plague after plague is coming. And so AI is being created to replace humankind. 
I think y'all just be watching these movies, I Robot and all these different movies, and it just be what it is. Nah, it's not just a good movie. It's revelation. It's the secrets and the mysteries of what's really going on. Hidden things within the movies that God is secretly trying to show us, but we have to be spiritual to understand. Famine is coming. Right now is your time to build. Right now is your time to establish. We are in the third year of prosperity. We are in the third year of this prosperity. And so we have to build. We have to create. It is now time to start farming. Build and grow your own crops. Grow your own stuff. Get seeds. Do what needs to be done so that you and your family is taken care of. Again, get connected to ministries that are sounding the alarms because those are the ministries God is covering and protecting. He is warning us so that we could be prepared, so that we don't have to worry about this stuff. The body of Christ is not going to suffer. The body of Christ is not going to go through. You're going to have to learn how to fast like never before. If you are not good at fasting, you need to train yourself now, train your body now, train your body now, because crops don't grow overnight. Crops do not grow overnight. You can't put a seed in the ground and tomorrow you're going to get that seed of what that fruit is supposed to be from that seed or that vegetable, that crop is going to be from that seed. No, it takes time for a seed to produce what that seed is. So you're going to have to learn how to fast. You're going to have to learn how to tarry. You have to learn how to wait. But if you are producing now in the time when the famine comes, you'll still be able to produce and put seed in the ground and still have a harvest from what you were already harvesting and planting in this prosperity time. Now, God says, my children who are in me, their grounds, their soil will be cultivated soil that when they plant, they will produce a harvest. All grounds will not be good grounds. All grounds will not be good ground. But he says, my children, my children, my children, because they would never beg for bread. My children. They will have good soil to plant. Go buy soil now. Start buying soil now. Start buying fertilizer now. Start buying the things you need now. Please take heed to the word of the Lord. The Lord said he's going to grant us good soil, but we've also got to go out and do our work as well. We cannot just wait on God to just throw everything at us. This is a, I've got to walk in faith and I've got to make moves. You work your faith because faith without works is dead. We get the word of the Lord, but the word of the Lord is going to take place. But where are you in that word of the Lord? What part of what you have to do, you are doing within that word of the Lord. He's giving you instructions. Stock up on the items for hygiene. Stock up on cleaning supplies. Stock up on seeds to plant crops. Stock Stock up on foods that are going to be good for you so that when you have what you have, you still can plant what you need to plant to have what you have. And still yet in that time, you will be able to still produce. Do not get caught up with your work undone. The Lord is giving the body of Christ the advantage. The advancement to go forth. This is in the word of the Lord. I'm not telling you nothing that's outside of the word of the Lord. He says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. I will then go to the father on their behalf. I will pray. And guess what? The father will then come forth because through the spirit of God, which is Jesus Christ, who released the gift when he ascended and the spirit descended into us, through us, that is 
our connection to God, guess what? I will take care of them that's connected to me. I will give them what they're supposed to have when they're connected to me. You will not lack. The children's bread is ours. And we, the children, will never beg for that bread because he's given us the opportunity to produce. He's given us the opportunity to produce. So 2025, expect to start seeing that virus arise. And 2027, going into 2028, begin to start noticing the famine. Because it's coming. And we've already gotten signs. The shelves are not as full as they're supposed to be. The shelves are not as full as they are supposed to be. There are a lot of things that's not on the shelves anymore. There are a lot of things that are discontinuing now. This is the time, if you are a business owner, to market, to work your businesses, to do what you need to do for your businesses. Because when it all comes full circle, it will be the kingdom businesses that will be established and they would have to come to us and buy. They would have to come to us and buy. God says this is the Joseph days. This is what happened in Joseph's time. He was made second in command. God says I'm putting a kingdom leader in command that they will be the one that will lead the people. So this is your time now to build because when it comes down, just like in Joseph's time, they had to come and buy. They had to come and use what they had to get what was stored up and stocked up. So if you have been given and God has been pressuring and pushing on you, you've been feeling the urge to start that business, to go forth in it. God is going to give you the resources you need. God is going to give you the finances and the provision you need to make sure that it goes forth because he needs it established so that when everything goes down, people will have to come to you and buy. You will become wealthy in the famine. What looks crazy and sounds crazy is not crazy. God says, I take the foolish thing to confound the wise. It may be foolish to them. It's because they're not spiritual. And if you're not spiritual, you cannot comprehend the things of the spirit. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So we have to make sure that we are spiritual and we're doing what we're supposed to do. Build, establish, plant, work, toil, repent. And walk in the spirit of the Lord. Walk in the spirit of the Lord. I'm getting ready to give you some scriptures. And I'm getting ready to break this thing down. Even the more of what the Lord has been giving me. Concerning what's taking place. Because we have to make sure as the body of Christ. That we are walking in the will of God. Again, this is not a word to cause fear or make fear arouse, but this is a word of warning that we can get in position. This is a word that we need to take heed to that we can position ourselves now spiritually and in the natural because so it is in the spirit, so it is in the natural. So it is imperative that you align yourself spiritually with God. So the word of the Lord for God's people, again, 2025, we will start seeing the virus. 2027, going into 2028, famine will begin. We have to do the work now. We have to do the work now. And so we have to be careful. Um, I was, well, this was like a month ago. I was reading in Joshua. And um, the book of Joshua, I was reading in the word of God. And I happen to, I can say stumble upon um, two different chapters. And I was reading it out of the New Living Translation. And I love how it's amazing. Um, I was telling my husband and my daughter about what the Lord was speaking to me. And my daughter was telling me that someone else from our church had actually posted it on Facebook. And what God was saying, because a lot of people, um, I've been getting a lot of inboxes about AI. This goes with the prophecy. because again. AI, artificial intelligence is being created to kind of replace humankind. Um, 
It's not a, oh, we're creating AI so that you can do less work. They will help you. This is what's being said. They're going to help you. They're going to assist you. They're going to advise you. No, this is, I want to take over. And so this is what the AI is being created to replace humankind. And so I begin to read in the book of Joshua and I got to chapter seven. And when I got to uh, chapter seven, if you read the header of Joshua chapter seven in the new living translation, you read the header of chapter seven, Joshua chapter seven, it says AI defeats Israel, the Israelites. AI defeats the Israelites. Now in the word of the Lord, and this is why I said, I'm only going to give you the prophecy, but the prophecy is the word of the Lord. And so a lot of people don't know that God knew what was coming because God is God. God knows all things. God sits high. He looks low. He knows all things. He sees all things. And so in this chapter, it speaks about AI, but AI is literally a city. AI becomes a nation, which is derived from the Amorites. Amorites. So it's derived from the Amorites, which is now AI. It's a city that the Israelites have been called to go up against. They are a nation. AI is a nation. And what are they doing now? They're trying to create a nation of artificial intelligence. First and foremost, it's artificial, it's fake. How can fake be intelligent? And so what is happening is uh, uh, Israel at this time with Joshua as their leader is now called to, to take territory. God is allowing them to take territory because they had just taken over the land. Um, and they were just conquering all of the land that God told them they could have. The Israelites was in the position of taking territory. And so the body of Christ, God is going to use the body of Christ majorly in the times to come. The body of Christ is going to be major, but the body of Christ has to be obedient. You need to type in this section right here. Obedience is better than a sacrifice because this is going to be very important and very imperative in the years to come. I need you to write in the comment section, obedience is better than a sacrifice. Obedience is better than a sacrifice. Obedience is better than a sacrifice. If you try to sacrifice and not obey God, you will die out. You will die out. So you want to be obedient. Good. You want to be obedient. And so now they're creating a nation of artificial intelligence. And so AI was a city. Oh, y'all writing that thing up there. That's what I'm talking about. AI was a city. It was land. It was territory that God was giving Josh, Joshua and the Israelites the opportunity to conquer and to take. And so God sent them. Listen closely. God sent Joshua and the Israelites to go up to the city of Ai. And to go to the city of Ai to take over. Now listen, this is what's amazing. This is what's amazing. When you read in Joshua chapter 7 verse 9, it says, for when the Canaanites and all the other people living in the land hear about it, they will surround us and wipe our name off the face of the earth. Catch it. They will surround us and wipe our name off the face of the earth. And then what will happen to the honor of your great name? This is Joshua now talking to God. Why? Because in chapter 7, when God sent them 
to take territory of AI, to demolish AI. First and foremost, when you read it, it said that AI was not a big nation. It wasn't a big nation. AI wasn't a big nation. It wasn't a lot of people. It wasn't a lot of people that they would have to conquer or they would have had to destroy. Right now, we're in the times where AI is not a lot. It's not a lot. They're trying to grow it and grow it and grow it. But we're in a time now where AI has not reached the capacity of where they want AI to reach. And so Joshua was in a time where he was like, oh, this is going to be a simple conquering. We, we're going to conquer this land easy. We, we're going to conquer the city of AI easy. So we don't need to take a lot in with us. We don't need a lot of people. So the Bible says that they now go up with like 3000 men. They go up to the city of AI to sneak in and say when they went in, it stated that AI destroyed them and conquered them and killed about, I think it was like maybe like 46 or 63 or something like that. Men, I think it was like 46. I got to go back and look at it to, to be for certain of how many people were killed from the Israelites. But it said the rest of them got away, but it was a certain number of the Israelites that was killed and the Israelites lost the battle up against AI. And so when here it is, this verse, verse nine, Joshua is talking to God. Joshua is talking to God because Joshua is like, God, you told us to go forth. You told us to conquer. You told us to go and take this land. Now we done took the land from all these other places. We done conquered we done killed their kings. We done took all this stuff. We done destroyed all. How is it that you tell us to go up against AI and we are now destroyed by AI? How is that? And this is where this verse comes in. He says, now what's going to happen is they're going to see that we have been defeated. They're going to see that we, we, we now, we now have no, it's going to look like we have no power. And now when they see that, when they see us, fall off when they see what took place they're gonna wipe us out what are they trying to do what are they trying to do now they're trying to wipe out humankind this is the word of god see we when 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 we really get in the in the spirit of god god will give you discernment and show you what is going on So what's happening if we continue to create AI, we send this virus, we create famine, we do all this stuff, we will take over. We can take out the body of Christ. We can kill off the people. We can rule the world. We can really do what we want to do because now all of the wealthy, all of the millionaires and the billionaires and all of these people who got all this money, who's sitting up high and they, they sitting back and they creating clones. They're creating clones so that they can go and hide out when all of this hits the fan because they think they're going to be protected not knowing that all of this is going to turn around and bite them in their behinds. We've got to be on guard. And so they're trying to wipe us out. And Joshua is like, wait a minute. When they hear about when all of the other cities hear about what happened, they're going to try to surround us and try to wipe us out. And this is what's trying to happen. They're trying to wipe us out. But there was a reason why the Israelites were defeated. Let's keep going. Because we've got to understand why I said obedience is better than sacrifice. The Bible says that when God began to speak to Joshua, when Joshua went to God and Joshua told God, God, what are you doing? Why did you allow us to go up and we were defeated? And now all these people are going to hear about it. God then responds back to Joshua and he begins to tell Joshua. He says, first of all, somebody was disobedient. This is one of the reasons why there's so much that God allows to come forth in the land because of disobedience. 
This is why a lot of things happen in the world and God got to do all of this stuff. It is because of the fact that people are disobedient. They do not follow. They do not listen at God. They do not do what they're supposed to do. And say, so God says somebody was disobedient. Somebody went in there and took what was apart from me. Now, when you look at the verse, when you look at the verse, because this is so good. When you look at the verse, let's go to verse, I read verse nine. Let's go to verse 10. I, I'm, I'm going to read verse 10 through 13 really quickly because someone in the camp disobeyed God. They disobeyed God and they did something they weren't supposed to do. So let's read, let's read Joshua chapter seven, verse 10. I read verse nine. It says, but the Lord said to Joshua, get up because Joshua is upset and he's crying. He's laying on his face. He's crying to God. And he's like, AI then destroyed us, then, then came up and, 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 and beat us and all this type of stuff. And God says in verse 10, he says, but the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why are you lying on your face like this? Israel has sinned and broken my covenant. They have stolen some of the things that I commanded must be set apart for me. And they have not only stolen them, but they lied about it and hidden the things among their own belongings. That is why the Israelites are running from their enemies in defeat. For now, Israel itself has been set apart for destruction. I will not remain with you any longer unless you destroy the things among you that were set apart for destruction. Get up, command the people to purify themselves in preparation for tomorrow. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, hidden among you, O Israel, are the things set apart for the Lord. You will never defeat your enemies unless you remove these things from among you. Here it is. God is telling Joshua. There were some things that I set apart. That I wanted destroyed. And this is what happens. This is what happens. The body of Christ who claim to be the body of Christ. They start getting connected to the world and they start getting connected and they start selling out and they start doing all of these different things. And they start taking on stuff that is supposed to be set apart. When you look up this word, when, when you look at the word set apart in this particular verse, I don't think people know this, but there's a difference when you write a part and a part. Some of you are like, what? When you want to be a part of something and you're happy to be a part of something, you don't write A-P-A-R-T together as one word. You write A as one word and part. P-A-R-T, P-A-R-T. You write them two separate. When you're a part of something and you want to be a part of something, you write A space P-A-R-T. That means you are a part. But when you are a part, that means you're not connected. It's supposed to be separated from it. You're separating from it. When you're tearing apart something, you spell A P A R T together as one word. A lot of people don't know that. And so when God because set apart means to put it away from you, but to be apart is A space P A R T. He wrote it in the Bible as apart meaning together. So what he was saying was that someone took something 
that was supposed to be separated from them for him that he could destroy it. But they took it as a sacrifice for them. So somebody in the camp was disobedient. This is why I said in the beginning of what God said for this prophecy. In this prophecy, it is imperative who you are connected to because who you are connected to can cause you to die. Who you are connected to can cause you to get killed off. Who you are connected to can cause you to get the virus. Who you are connected to can cause you to die out in the famine and not survive. You have to be careful who you're connected to. If you're not connected to God, then you're going to be in trouble because you're going to get connected to what's not connected to God. And so a whole nation was defeated by their enemy because of who they were connected to that disobeyed God. And now AI has the advantage and the upper hand. An entire nation because one somebody disobeyed God and these people were connected to that one person. So now they're in defeat. Now their enemy is overtaking them. They have no authority and no power. And God is literally saying to them, I'm not with you. You will never defeat your enemies until you remove these things from among you. He said the things. So that means who you're connected to are connected to things that God wants destroyed. Do you know how many people who are claiming God? that are carrying worldly possessions, doing worldly things. I'm not talking about clothes and shoes and all this different types of stuff and all of that. I'm talking about the things that they, that they're housing uh, positions and, and they're paying for stuff and they're, they're, they're selling out for stuff and, and they got all of this stuff among them and, and who they sitting with and what they sitting with and what's being presented at tables. Do you know how many leaders are sitting on a, uh, pulpits and 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 they are connected to things outside in the world and you sitting under that you're sitting under that and so when the enemy and you try to figure out god i go to church i do right I'm not doing wrong, God. I'm not messing up. Why am I going through all of this in this ministry? I'm in a church where I can get the word and I can do however, whatever, whatever. And you're trying to figure out why your life is the way that it is. Who are you connected to? Who are you connected to? It's imperative of your connections. Israel was defeated because of their connection. So God says, you've got stuff up among you. You got leaders who do witchcraft, conjuring up dead spirits to get power, operating in familiar spirits. You go into their conferences. You go into these people who call themselves prophets. You go into their churches for them to prophesy to you and all this type of stuff. You getting connected to all of this stuff. And your enemy, Satan, who is really your enemy, who comes to steal, kill, and destroy, is going to defeat you every time. Because God is not covering you no more when you're connected to what he has and what he wants apart from him. He says, it's supposed to be apart from me. But you bring it in my presence. Jesus, you bringing this nasty, filthy stuff in the presence of God. He said, this is supposed to be apart from me. Apart, not apart, but apart from me. Apart from me. It's not supposed to be connected to me because I want to destroy it. The reason why when Israel was to go up against the land and God would tell them, burn up the whole city. It's because he didn't want them to be connected to the foul things that went on in the city. Because if they were connected, if they had left the stuff that was in those cities, they, they would have been connected to all of that foul stuff. They would have taken on the, 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 the lifestyle of those things. They, they would have been connected to that. You know why? Because things have spirits and spirits pass through things. That's why you got to be careful. The clothes you put, you can't be wearing everybody's clothes. That's my sister. Do your sister have a spirit? That's my buddy. We wear the same shoes. Ain't nobody wearing, nah. uh mm, mm mm 
Mm -mm. You got to be spirit, Holy Ghost filled. You uh, ain't no, uh, uh. You can't even buy me a gift. And God say, no, don't, don't, uh, uh. You, you, you can't get, you can't use that gift. You can't do that. You have to be careful. Spirits travel. So God was like, mm -mm, burn up the city. I don't want nothing in there because I'm a God that I can take nothing and build something. I'm the God of the impossible. And where there's rubbish, I can bring forth a revitalizing out of the rubbish. So God's like, burn it all up. Because God doesn't want them to take on the likings of that stuff. He didn't want them to do that type of stuff. He didn't want them to get connected to that type of stuff. He didn't want them to be uh, uh have the people and be connected to the people. That's why he wanted them to kill the kings and everything because they would have intermarried. He didn't want nobody to survive because they would have intermarried and you intermarrying with what's not of God because it's supposed to be apart from him. And so now AI defeats Israel because somebody had things among them that was not supposed to be among them. So the Bible then says, that Joshua follows the instructions of God and Joshua goes and calls out the different tribes because God told Joshua, bring everybody together, bring all Israel together and we're going to wean out. See, you got to get in a place where you allowing God, th this, this is connected to this prophecy because this is about AI. I told y'all about a month ago, I think it was a month ago, AI is going to be destroyed. AI is not going to last. AI is not going to last. I told y'all about a month ago. I don't know who was on my live when I said it or who read my post or however, but I told you AI is not going to last. It seems crazy. It seems active. It seems like it's going forth now. It will not last. It will not last. AI will not last. It will be destroyed. These artificial intelligence will not last because it's man-made and because it's man-made and it wasn't sent by God because there's a lot of man-made things that God has allowed man to create for his glory. But this has nothing to do with God. This is not a God invention. This is not a God thing. This is here to try to replace God's people and them to try to be God. So this has nothing to do with God. And this is why this is going to be destroyed. And so the Bible then says that God told, told Joshua, Joshua, bring all of Israel together. We're going to wean out the one. And the Bible says that Joshua brings all of Israel together. When all of Israel now comes together, the Bible then says that they now wean out from out of Israel, the tribe of Judah. And now they have to pick from the tribe of Judah. And when they picked from the tribe of Judah, they picked out a specific family and the family, the, the, the head of the family, his name was, I think it's, I'm trying to pronounce it right, but it's spelled A-C-H-A-N, Akon. I think it's Akon or Achon or something like that. It's Akon. I think it's Akon. And his name was Akon. It's A-C-H-A-N. And when they pulled out from the tribe and they pulled out from that family, then they pulled out that it was Akon who actually took what was there. And Joshua told him, Joshua said, don't lie because you have already been exposed. See, when you get real bold people, see, this is what's got to happen. We've got to get people who are really bold and who are not afraid to do what God tells them to do. This is why obedience is better than sacrifice. Because you think you sacrifice and stuff by not doing what God tell you to do, you get yourself in trouble. And so here it is. We got to have people that's bold enough to say, uh-uh, you ain't right. No, 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 no. You're not right. And we're not going to be destroyed because of you. You either get right or you got to go. See, the Bible tells you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See, people get mad when people get put out of the churches. And they be like, how to pastor put people out of the church? Because Paul let us know that if there's people that's not right in the church, you got to get them type of people from among you. And it is also in the word right here that you have to get them type of people from among you. Because if you don't get those type of people from among you, then you're going to be uh, suffering and going through because of the people that you keep allowing up under you that you know are not right. And that's 
that's doing the wrong thing. They get mad at me and other pastors who really do the right things when they telling people and they correct and they rebuke and they telling them to get it right. They get mad and they leave the church. Then they go and they tell you that you lie and they try to make you look bad. You can do what you want to do, say what you want to say. You got to be bold in the spirit of God and you got to tell people the truth. You got to wean them out. You got to expose the enemy. And this is what happened. Exposure came. Because Joshua was like, we are not going to not have God's presence with us. We are not going to keep being defeated by our enemies. We are not getting ready to go out here and be wiped out and all humankind be wiped out. No, we're not about to do that. Uh, tribe of Judah. Okay. Who God from out of the tribe of Judah? His family, Akon. Okay, Akon, bring your family on up here. And the Bible says he called Akon and he says, tell us what you took. You can't lie because God already called you out. And the Bible then says that Akon lets them know, uh, yeah, I took a robe. I took some silver and I took, you, you know, he's telling what he took. So God says, Uh, Joshua, take all that stuff that I wanted apart from me because I wanted it destroyed. Take all of that stuff, get him, get his family, and burn him up. And it says there were the people from Israel stoned them to death and burned them up with the stuff that he stole. This is what's happening to those that are supposed to be in the body of Christ that's being disobedient. This man was a part of the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah is the tribe that Jesus is in. Jesus is from the tribe of Judah. So this man is supposed to be a part of Christ. But he disobeyed God. And in his disobedience caused him and his family, and his generation, and his lineage to be destroyed. They were stoned and burned. And so here it is, after they're stoned and burned, God then says, now go up and take the city of Ai. See, the reason why AI has the advantage right now, the reason why AI looks like they're winning, the reason why artificial intelligence look like they're gaining ground is because of the fact that we, the body of Christ, got to get on our game. We got to start warring and praying now. We've got to remove from among us what is not right. We've got to start speaking the truth in season, out of season. We got to start preaching the real gospel. Stop sugarcoating and watering down the word because you're giving AI access. You're giving the enemy access to defeat you. And so now that what is supposed to be apart from God is now removed. God tells Joshua, y'all go ahead, go on up. You can take IA now. You, you can take AI, AI, AI out now. You can take AI out now. Go ahead. Your enemy will not defeat you. So the Bible says Joshua goes up. He creates a diversion and he tells them we're going to ambush them. He sends out more people than the 3,000 that he sent out last time. He sent out about 30,000 of them. And he sends them out and he sends them up to go up the hill, to go up to AI. And when they go up to AI and they go up, he says, I want you to go in. And when you go in, I want you to run out. And the way they ambushed him, he says, when you go in, run out that they can run behind you. When they run behind you, then... Those that are in position to ambush the enemy, you would then ambush him. And then we then will go and run into the city, burn up the city. And then we will do what we need to do. Uh, chapter eight, Joshua chapter eight and verse 28 says, so Joshua burned the town of Ai and it became a permanent mound of ruins. Desolate to this very day. Catch that. It says Joshua burned up the town of Ai. 
and it became a permanent mound of ruins. All of this artificial influence and artificial intelligence and all of these robots and all of this stuff they're building is going to become a permanent mound. It's going to be destroyed. It's going to be burned up. And it will remain desolate because it's not from God. God is going to give us the opportunity to go forth. God has given us the opportunity. Even in what's coming, we will be protected. God told me to give the people of God the scriptures. This is for the body of Christ. Not for those that profess the body of Christ and they're not operating as the body of Christ. This word is for the body of Christ. Those of you that are listening. The Lord said to the body of Christ, do not fear my children. For I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you to the ends of time. I have placed a hedge of protection around my children. They that dwell in the secret place of the Most High will be able to abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Those that run into the strong tower, in that name, they are then safe. God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. The Bible says that this is Paul now speaking and he is saying that the power of God and the grace of God is sufficient for you. Even in your time where you feel weak and you feel weary and you're feeling like you're wanting to give up or throw in the towel, he is saying for the body of Christ, my grace is gonna be all that you need. He is saying to the body of Christ, my power works best when you are in that state. So do not take it lightly that you may feel in those different types of manner. God says, I will work through you. God says, I will show up for you. No need to fret, no need to fear. For I have not given you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. The spirit of the Lord says, this is a time where you need to unify, come together, and worship, pray, fast, and get into a place of reconciliation with me. God says, come back to me and love me in the manner that you've loved me before. Do not neglect my do not neglect my call for you. Do not do not neglect my call for you. Do not neglect me coming for you. I am in need of a people for a time is coming that I will send out those that will get my loss. I will send out those that will bring back my prodigals, please, sons and daughters, get in position and do the will of the Father. Get in position and do the work of the Father. For it is not a time that we sit around and live, huh, that we live like we are civilians in the earth. For it is a time that we work like mighty soldiers in the army of the Lord, that we then can be protected and covered. Armor yourself in the armor of the Lord. Make sure that you are meditating on my word day and night, that you will be fortified, you will be filled, and you will be protected. He says, I will allow my children to be planted by the rivers of water that even in famine, they shall bring forth in the seasons to come. Sons and daughters, take heed to the word of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse 15 says, and the Lord will protect you from all sickness. He will not let you suffer from the terrible diseases you knew in Egypt, but he will inflict them on all your 
enemies. The Lord is saying in this time, sickness is not your portion. Even when the virus hits the land, it will not come your dwelling for you will not suffer in the terrible diseases because it is for the land of Egypt. It is for the land of the enemies against God. It is for the world. It is not for the body of Christ. So do not be fearful. Do not fret. Be patient and wait for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. For the Lord is saying in this time, my children shall be protected. They shall be covered if they choose me. This is the word of the Lord. Please hear me. Please hear me as I released this word. Take coverage. Take coverage. Get in a ministry that will help you grow in God, that will help you see who you are in God and help you push forth in your purpose in God. Get in a ministry that will not have you out here doing any and everything, but that will keep you in alignment with God. The Bible also says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Because when you have Christ Jesus's mind, you're gonna operate like Christ Jesus. When all of the chaotic things are going on, if you keep your your mind stayed on Jesus. He will keep you in perfect peace. If you continue to renew your mind, you will not get caught up into transforming to the ways of the world or conforming to the ways of the world, but you will always be in a posture where your mind is renewed. Your mind is transformed to live like God. I am here to let you all know that these things are coming, but God's people are protected. God's people are protected. We've got to armor up. We've got to become soldiers and not civilians. This is not the time to be chilling. This is not the time to be relaxing. This is not the time to be sitting back. You need to build. You need to plant. You need to break up the fallow ground. Remove from among you those things that are not of God. Get them apart from you. Take coverage. Take coverage. Take this word. Do not let it fall to the ground. But take it and live by it. I declare the word and the works of the Lord. Please share this with all that you know need it. It's over 2,000 something of you on here. Give it to everybody that need it. If every 2,001 of you share this to somebody, we can save a lot of people. We can help a lot of people get God. We can help a lot of people. I will be coming on regularly to make sure that we are in alignment checking in to make sure that we are staying focused. We're not allowing these distractions. When the enemy sends distractions, you better know she's coming on and she's going to make sure. Don't y'all get distracted by that. I see that's in the news. Don't you get distracted by that. Don't you pay that no attention. Don't you let that get to you. We've got to be careful. I'm going to be putting on different fasts so we can be fasting and girding up our loins, preparing ourselves for what is to come. We've got to get the intercessors back on the wall, get the wailing women to come out and start crying out and wailing and praying to cover our families, our children, our generations. Our babies are getting ready to go back to school. We got to make sure they're protected. Our duty is to destroy the enemy. And God has given us the leverage to do it. Let's do it. Listen, I love you all so much. Again, please share this with somebody. Put it in somebody's inbox. Put it on somebody's timeline. Put it on your timeline. Send it to somebody in a text message. Make sure they get it. For this is the word of the Lord today. I love you all. Y'all have a blessed rest of your day.